It's, it's getting packages like this that make me realize how short an Italian I am. It's me, Mario. Not sure if you can see the sticker. Oh, prism. Exciting times. So rather than me awkwardly talking over a box, why don't we open it and I'll show you exactly what's inside. Got my trusty knife, of course, if uh, you open packages on the regs, which I seem to do fairly often. You need one of these, very important. Um, it's actually so blunt because, well, you know, I just uh, haven't sharpened it. Shout out Fabio, open the package. It's the uh, Prism Sound Atlas, and uh, it's their new one, which comes in a very, very sexy color. I've had special instructions not to uh, ruin any of the packaging because uh, it's a it's a demo unit, so we've just got to be. This is literally a box within a box within a box. Powering up, da -de -da -de -da. manual stuff, don't need it. Who needs the manual? No, just kidding, I'm, I'm gonna read that and pick it up. Then. I'll put it back as I found it, I promise. Usually a kettle lead. USB, so we got a USB A to B here, right, a normal connection. I guess what is like the, the, the I think this is the Spediff. USB-C and um, some rack plates, I'm guessing. So you can mount it. Ah, here it is. Oh, it's in black now. Mine's in silver, you see. Okay. I'm gonna take it out the plastic and put it on my desk and then film some sexy B-roll. So let's cue that now. Now, what is it about this prism unit that makes it so special? I admittedly have a prism unit, so I'm somewhat biased. If you haven't heard of prism sound before, they make audio interfaces and they also make some hardware actually, which is unbelievably good. Everyone who uses prism raves about it and the specific thing that they're raving about are the converters, the A to D and D to A conversions. So for those of you who don't know what that is, that's the analog to digital and the digital to analog conversion. So think of it as electrical to binary and then binary to electrical. Conversion is essential when you're mixing and mastering and recording too, because you basically want to get the most transparent signal possible from your DAW to your speakers or from your microphone or your guitar, your synthesizer to your DAW. But how much difference can they really make? Well, today I'm gonna to do a shootout between the Universal Apollo 8 and the Prism Atlas. Why? Because they're quite similar in the way that they both have eight ins and eight outs, and they're pretty popular, except for the Prism is double the price. So I'm gonna record out of each of them and back into itself with a few different test subjects in order to see if you guys can tell the difference. We're gonna do one of those little A-B tests where I'm not gonna tell you what it is, and I'm gonna give you the results at the end of the video. Let's see how good your listening is. And Let's see how good mine is too. Now what's new about the Prism Sound, apart from it coming in this really nice, sexy black color, is that it comes with something called Dante. Now I'm not going to go into Dante today, but let me explain what it is. You can basically connect your audio interface and any other audio interfaces that run on ethernet together. And then you can create aggregate devices. So for bigger studios where maybe you're running three of these, three of some other audio interface or converter sets, and you know, maybe you've got something like 64 inputs and outputs, Dante allows you to create an aggregate device over ethernet, which is far more bandwidth than USB, therefore considered a more professional connection. And you can control the ins and outs from each and every single one via a program on your computer. All right the A-B test, what you've all been waiting for up to this point. How good are your ears? And can you tell the difference between a $5,000 interface and a $2,000 one? Some quick technical specifications before we move on. So I'm using exactly the same cables, by the way. These are custom made Nutrik connectors with Van Damme cables, which sound and are amazing. Gonna last me my whole life. 
If you want to see the video on why you should never buy cheap cables, link above. There is a difference in the sound, trust me. You can get higher spec cables than this and I don't know, but you know, incremental differences. Yes, I realized that I'm in a completely different outfit and that's because I didn't actually have the right drivers which were meant to come on some fancy USB stick and they had to send them to me because this isn't even out yet. So, you want the answers? Right, on the first track, the drum and bass one, A was Apollo and B was Atlas. Did you get it? In the second one, A was Atlas and B was Apollo. And on the third one, A was Apollo and B was Atlas. Now, I know the differences are hard to hear because YouTube compresses its audio to 256 AAC, I believe. But if you can hear the difference and you got them all right, well done. If you're not sure what to listen out for, the main difference I found, and let me know if you agree with this in the comments below, was that the Atlas had a clearer stereo image, a little more depth, and it felt kind of brighter, but not in an unnatural way, in a kind of pristine way. Whereas the Universal Audio Apollo still sounded great, but was a little less clear in the high frequencies. In a kind of slightly darker tonal way, but not massively. What did you guys get? Did you do well? Did you do well? Did you, do you think you can hear? Are you an audiophile? Are you just like, WTF Fabio, why would I spend so much more on a unit like this? But let me tell you something, I use the Prism Lyra every day, same converters as the Atlas, and I love it. It just means that I can hear everything as perfectly as possible. And I record out of the Lyra back into itself, so I even get the sound of the converters translated onto the final printed mix or master. Just wanna say a big thanks to Prism for sending this over. I'll try and send it back, but you know, things always get lost in the post, so let me know when you get the delivery, if you do. Remember, they're both great interfaces and it's what your budget allows for. How much money are you making for music? How often are you using eight inputs and outputs? And what are those eight inputs and outputs going to? Do you need to make sure that you're not losing anything on the conversion whatsoever when traveling to analog gear, recording in, or going to your speakers? 
these little subtle incremental changes can make a difference. And as we know in music, you pay a lot for very little. That's just the way it is, as you get more and more professional, things get more expensive, but don't become notably that different unless you really know what you're listening out for. Before you go, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. It's been a pleasure as always. Great to see you. It's a big love from Noise and we'll catch up soon. Peace.